Hey guys, Sam here, and welcome back to our FC Barcelona career mode. Do you guys prefer no intro at the start of the video? That little video clip that I used to run, didn't want to use it. I don't know what you guys think. Do you prefer it or do you not prefer it? Just get straight into the episode uh, and get straight into the action. Let me know in the comments down below. Also, we do have a press conference for you guys. So without further ado, we'll get into that. Uh, and once we've got that out of the way, we will continue on with the episode. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to today's press conference. Thank you for joining us today. We ask that all mobile phones will be turned off during this press conference. But without further ado, let's get into the questions. The first question comes from Almi Harazai, and he asks, do you think Mares can replace Messi as he is? Now, remembering that all these answers are straight from Luis Enrique's mouth, he says, Mares is an extremely talented player and still has many years to grow and mature, but he thinks comparing him to Messi right now is a bit too much, a bit too soon. Cages Thread 10 wants us to clear up the rumors surrounding Sergio Busquets and he suggested move away from Barcelona due to many of his old friends and teammates having left the club. It's true Sergio grew up and played with, for many years, the players that were suspended. However, he is devoted to the club and he wants to captain this side back to greatness, so we don't think he will be leaving. There was plenty of rumors on Denis Suarez in the comment section. We thought we'd clear that up as well. As many of you know, it was rumored that he would come back to FC Barcelona. We're just waiting on him to pass a fitness test and pass his medical, and we can confirm that he will be a Barcelona player. Hammond Noob 3 would like us to shed some light on the Pogba links to FC Barcelona. He asks Louis if he can confirm or deny these reports, whether we are in talks with Paul Pogba. Uh, and we can confirm there has been no talks with Juventus over any players. They were pretty upset at our decision to sell Danny Alves to Chelsea, despite them not making a formal offer. So we doubt that there will be any communication between the two clubs over any players. We also did see a lot of Hector Bayer in links in the comments section. And Luis wanted to clear up that we have signed a right back in Bruno Perez, and we feel that he is the best replacement for Danny Alves. So there's no talks to sign Hector Bayer in, and we don't think there will be ever. And finally, we'd like to clear up the situation with Mark Bartra. Uh, we believe that we could hold on to Mark for the following season. However, as rumors suggest, and as many of you know, Mark is on his way to Borussia Dortmund. It's not what we plan to happen. However, that is what Mark wants. And we also cannot disclose any information on his potential replacement, um, but we will be searching in the next couple of weeks before the season starts to get someone in to join Samuel Umtiti in that center back partnership. Thank you all for your questions. That's all we have time for today. We will be holding another press conference at the start of September after the transfer window is over. So leave your comments and your questions in the comment section below, and we will be searching through them. And I'll be getting Luis Enrique's answers to all these questions. Remembering that the next one is going to be after we've made all the transfers. So if you want to talk about the transfers that we made and the transfers that we're going to make and the season coming up ahead, that would be very much appreciated. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. Let's continue with the episode. Right now that you've watched the press conference, you'll understand that a few things are happening in the month of August. The main one being Mark Bartra's uh, leaving, I'm assuming, to Borussia Dortmund. And I did say in the press conference that it is confirmed that he will be going to Borussia Dortmund. But I can't get Borussia Dortmund to offer for Mark Bartra. You know, I can't make them bid for him. So what I'm planning to do is actually go to Borussia Dortmund and offer Mark Bartra for a player of theirs. I don't know who exactly I want to bring in. I don't want it to be something Someone that'll be starting, but maybe someone to give a little bit of depth to the team because I do want to replace Mark Barcha with somebody else. I do want to bring in a different centre back. So I don't want any of the centre backs at Borussia Dortmund. And taking a look at the midfield, it's pretty strong. So I'm going to look at Borussia Dortmund's uh, roster and see who I should bring in. Right, no one exactly stood out to me that we should bring in in a different position. So I'm thinking of bringing in Nevin Subotic as a backup centre back. Now he is most likely leaving Borussia Dortmund in real life, probably to another German team or a Premier League team, so he's definitely not going to go to Barcelona. However, only 27, still got a few decent years in him. Um, obviously, a lot of our centre-backs left in the transfer window, so we really don't have that much coverage in centre-back. As you saw, our backup was Lopez, who's 70 rated, so I think we need to bring in a backup centre-back. This is not who's replacing Mark Bartra as our main centre-back. We'll be signing him in a bit, um, but I think this is probably the best thing I can do, is get up a, get a backup centre-back, and we'll be getting him for free, because we're going to be sw swapping Mark Bartra for him, if I can get my words out. And as you can say, the chief executive says this deal could happen, so I feel like that's who we should go for, and I think that's who Barcelona should get as a backup centre-back. Another player that was rumoured to be joining Barcelona was Denis Suarez, and as we said, 
said, we can confirm that Dennis Suarez is going to be an FC Barcelona player. I didn't expect him to be that high rated already, and he's 14 million, so I don't even know how we're going to afford him, because we've used a lot of our money already, as you can see. We only have 13 million left in the bank. Might have to do a little bit of trading, might have to give him somebody. I'm going to see who I can afford to let go, because Dennis Suarez, at 22 years of age, at 80 rated, he can even play central midfield, so he will definitely be getting some minutes. He looks like a really good player, and I really want him back at FC Barcelona, especially with the news in real life that he has joined Barcelona. I feel like this is just the perfect move. We're going to give him Alex Vidal, who's about 8.5 million, and we're going to see if they even are interested in him at all. Um, hopefully they are. We want to spend as little as possible for Dennis Suarez, but as you can see, potentially to be between 17 and 20 million. So if they accept Vidal, that'd be really good, but no guarantees. So hopefully... We can get him cheap. Right, Supertic ended up moving, so we couldn't offer for him, and Borussia Dortmund didn't want to do that swap deal, so I'm still figuring out who to do for him, but in the meantime, I've done a transfer takeover. I've only done that to bring in the players that I need. I'm not going to go crazy with it. I'm going to invest in some youth uh, scouts as well, so I'm not going to be spending everything that I used from the transfer takeover, but I'm doing it to bring in the players that I need to bring in, such as Dennis Suarez. The swap deal didn't work, so I've just offered straight up 15 million, and Villarreal accepted, so we're bringing him in. I hope you guys don't mind too much of the financial takeover. It seriously is just to bring the players in that I need. I'm not going to go out and sign the best players. That's not what this is about. So I'm just going to bring in players that I think suit Barcelona. I'm going to bring in players that we need, and hopefully we'll get Mark Bartra off to Dortmund. I'm picking like literally the worst players I can find, just no names from Borussia Dortmund, and hoping they accept one of my uh, transfer deals. So, and the replacement for Mark Bartra is going to be Javi Martinez. I feel like this makes the most sense. Uh, FC Bayern Munich, they have a lot of good, talented centre backs. He's Spanish as well, so it really makes sense. 27 years of age. I want someone with a little bit more experience to guide. Um, Titi. And I just think it's a player that suits Barcelona. I think he's just really a solid player, a very underrated player, and we're going to bring him in as a crucial first team player. And there it is. We can confirm that Javi Martinez has joined Barcelona on a 25 million pound deal. Quite a bit actually for Javi Martinez, but hopefully he will be worth it. And I actually don't think 25 million in the grand scheme of things is too much. As I said, I didn't want to go crazy with the pricing, but they weren't accepting anything less. So I thought 25 million may as well I'll do it and yeah I still I'm a bit wary that you guys will be upset about the financial takeover but it's not a big deal I don't think and it's only I mean Barcelona has more money than everybody thinks they do so it only makes sense for them to be able to buy Javi Martinez if they want. Right, in the meantime, we're going to be playing Villarreal in the Super Copa. This is a two-legged opening tournament, opening cup, I guess. Two games against Villarreal. I'm um, assuming it's the league winners versus the domestic cup winners. We also play Villarreal in our opening game of the La Liga season. So three games against Villarreal is going to be pretty, pretty boring. But I'm deciding that I'm going to simulate the Super Copa because we play Villarreal twice in the Super Copa and then we play them in the league. So I'm going to sim the first two games against Villarreal being the Super Copper games and we're just going to play the league. I, I really don't feel like this is important. It's the full strength team. Those are not the confirmed numbers, by the way, for the Barcelona players. Mares is not going to be 11. Costa is not going to be 8. Um, I might change Claudio Bravo to number 1 as well. So those aren't confirmed numbers. We'll confirm them before the start of the La Liga season and I'll show you guys what numbers everybody gets. Dennis Suarez actually scored against us um, and also got sent off. So... I don't know, if he was trying to impress us, that, that red card doesn't help, but we're still going to sign him, and we win 3-1 in the first leg. That away goal kind of hurts, but I think we should be able to do the job away as well. Okay, there it is. Dennis Suarez will not be playing for Villarreal in the second leg of that cup. He'll actually be playing for us. That's pretty cool. He scored a goal as in Villarreal. He might even get on and score a goal for Barcelona as well. I don't know if any player's ever done that before, and we have found a player that Borussia Dortmund have accepted a deal for, Omar Diakite, I have no idea who he is or what he's about, but he's going to be a future first-team player. If he's 60 rated, I'd be happy with that. There it is, Mark Bartra has officially left for Borussia Dortmund. I feel like that's probably the best thing to do for Mark Bartra is to actually make that move happen in the game as well because he did sign there pretty early. It was sometime in June that he signed, so I feel like this is the best decision for the series. Javi Martinez and Omtiti as our two center backs, I think is still really good. I would have loved to have used Mark Bartra, but unfortunately in real life, he's moved on to Borussia Dortmund. And uh, we're going to do that in this game as well. We're going to do this in the save. We're trying to make this as realistic as possible. Obviously, realistic, but with the twist that players have been suspended. So we're going to let Mark Bartra go to Dortmund, and hopefully that's the best move for everybody. 
We've also set up scouting networks in Spain, in Portugal, and in France. So hopefully we'll be getting some talent from there. I feel like those are the three regions that Barcelona would be looking at when looking at talent. Mainly, obviously, Spain, but Portugal's right there, and France is there as well. So I feel like those are the closest three regions to Spain. I feel like those are the three regions that will bring us the most likely talent to join Barcelona. This is the second game that we're seeing against Villarreal. I realize Dennis Suarez can't actually play the second game because he got suspended, but it would have been cool if he got that chance to score in one of the legs for Villarreal and the other leg for Barcelona. That'd be absolutely amazing, but unfortunately he did get suspended and we should be closing out this game. So we're going to skip the rest of this half and there it is, nil-nil, a defensive job by Barcelona. I'll get on those squad numbers as soon as possible uh, and I'll make sure I get them done before the start of the league. But there's still a couple of things that need to be done in the transfer window. There's another play that Luis Enrique wanted to bring in, Jonathan Rodriguez. I've never heard anything about him before, I've never used him before. But Luis Enrique says that he's a decent striker and we do kind of need a backup striker. He's from Deportivo La Coruña, so he has some La Liga experience and he'll be playing as a sporadic first team player I think he might join he might not but he's got a decent bit of pace and some pretty good overall stats so I'm gonna trust Luis Enrique here he says he wants to bring him in so I'm gonna trust his judgment and the last player that Luis Enrique wants to bring in is Lucas Hernandez from Atletico Madrid obviously a rival team a team that is contending for the La Liga title but it's a huge move for Lucas Hernandez he's a squad rotational player at Atletico Madrid he'll probably get the same treatment here squad rotational role but he'll be getting a lot more game time Especially considering that we're in a lot of competitions. So Atletico Madrid, but they have a lot of talented centre-backs there. They have Miranda, they have Godin, they have um, Jimenez. So maybe he feels like he's best suited at Barcelona. We'll leave that up to him. But Luis Enrique would love to have him on. He thinks he's very, very talented. So the ball is in Lucas Hernandez's court. And Jonathan Rodriguez has decided to move to FC Barcelona. How can you say no to Barcelona? A bit more depth. We do have Munir already in the striker position, but that'll give a little bit more depth that Luis Enrique thinks that we need. And Lucas Hernandez has also decided to join us. The last transfer for the transfer window, a backup center back. We needed one. Subotic obviously didn't work out. That's who we wanted to bring in. Uh, but Lucas Hernandez can definitely do a job. I mean, Lopez is decent, 70 rated. He's got decent strength and decent tackling. But... I think Lucas Hernandez is a better fit. Right, those are the confirmed squad numbers going into the season. Claudio Bravo will wear the number one. Bruno Perez will wear the number two. Martinez, no, he wore the number eight at um, Bayern Munich. We're going to give him the same number here. No one's wearing the number eight. And so that's pretty weird, a centre-back wearing number eight. But he was also a defensive midfielder. Maybe that's why he likes the number eight, because he started out as a defensive midfielder. Nevertheless, we're going to give him number 8. That's what he wants. That's what he's going to get. And Titi is going to wear number 3. Jordi Alba is going to wear 18. Busquets retains his number 5. Rakitic retains his number 4. Halilovic wears 25. So we've kept it that way. Mares we've given number 11. I think that suits him the best. He didn't wear number 11 at Leicester. He wore 20-something. But we've given him the number 11 here at Barcelona. Aguero is going to take the number 10. And Costa is going to take the number 7. So I hope you guys agree with those squad numbers. A couple of the backups. Hernandez wore number 19 at, at Atletico Madrid. We've changed Turan to a 13. Dennis Suarez is going to take the number 6. Now in real life. He wants the number six jersey, so he's given him the number six, and hopefully he doesn't choke under the pressure knowing that he's wearing Xavi's number, because that'll always be Xavi's number. So those are some of the numbers. Kepa is Abalaga 32. Let me know if you guys disagree or agree with those numbers, and maybe I'll change them if you guys don't like them, but I think they're pretty good. I think everybody's wearing the number that they're supposed to wear, and if I've made any mistakes, just let me know. But that's it with the transfers. We're ready to get into the season. Our first game is at the Camp Nou against Villarreal. Luis Enrique is looking forward to this game, especially after everything that's happened. Barcelona want to show that they are still one of the bigger clubs in Spain. It's not going to be easy, but the team that he has built is pretty damn good. It's, it's not bad for replacing some of the best players in the world, and hopefully we can start things off fantastically against Villarreal. Three points would be absolutely fantastic. Without further ado, let's take a look at the lineup that Luis Enrique has put out. That is the lineup, no surprises. It's Aguero up front with Costa and Mares on each side. Halilovic, Busquets, and Rakitic make up a midfield three, with Jordi Alba, Umtiti, Martinez, and Perez as a back four. Claudio Bravo in between the sticks. A lot of people telling me that Halilovic is going to move to Valencia. That might be the case, but nothing is confirmed at the moment, so he will be sticking with the club, and hopefully he'll be beasting it in the midfield. The bench consists of Teo, Roberto, Suarez, Turan. Hernandez, Montoya, and Ariza Balaga, which means our new striker Rodriguez sits on the reserves. I really don't feel like Aguero is going to need to be subbed off. 
uh, during a game. And if he does, we can just put Teo in the striker role or even somebody else in the striker role. So I feel like he's only going to be playing in the cups and maybe some of the lesser games, but I feel like that's the strongest bench we could make. Teo more versatile, can play striker and right wing, could even put him on the left wing. So I feel like that is the best option for the bench is to have Teo instead of Rodriguez. Let me know what you guys thought of the in-game sound or the music. What do you guys prefer? I'm just kind of testing out to see which one you guys like more. I haven't done it in FIFA 16 at all using the actual in-game, you know, commentary and the fan noise. So let me know which one you guys prefer. Do you prefer just me to play music in the background or do you prefer the commentary and the stadium noises and all that? So let me know as we go into this game, which one you prefer. But without further ado, let's get into this game against Villarreal. And I'm hoping that Luis Enrique can start his new season off with a win. Rakitic now plays it through to Aguero. What can Aguero do? Finds Mares. Riyad Mares. Gonna pass it around. That's the Barcelona style. Just wait for the open spaces to open up. It's Halilovic now. He's gonna play in Kun Aguero. Aguero back to Halilovic. And it's Asensio with a great save. And another save. And that's beautiful play between Halilovic and Aguero. That is the Barca style of play right there. It's Nahuel Leva here. Bit of pace on him. Oh, he's gonna whip that in. And Bakambu was in there. But he's missed the header completely, which is good. It's going for the long ball. Try to find Douglas Costa. His first couple of touches here in the game. What's he going to do? Fake shots. Scoop turns. Another fake shot. Trying to get past his man. Good work from Douglas Costa to get past his man. He's got an open Ivan Rakitic. He can bang them. He's going to try and curl that. Essential with a great save. Mares probably had a shot there. I probably should have shot with Mares, but he's tried to whip it in. And unfortunately, it hasn't worked out. But it's very positive play here early on. Rakitic out wide for Mares. He's got room. What's he going to do? He's got Aguero with an overlapping run. Aguero now going to do a little bit of trickery, trying to get Mares into some open space. Riyad Mares has options in the middle. Rakitic is running in. It's fallen to him anyway. And it's over the bar. Sergio Asenjo has been absolutely beasting for Villarreal, keeping him in the game at the moment. Oh, good ball in. Riyad Mares, a little bit of a turn, a little bit of a drag back, and it doesn't work out. Livic to Alba to Busquets. Busquets has Rakitic open. Rakitic is going to try that. And Musashio with a great block. Riyad Mahrez steps over this. First corner for Barcelona. Whips it in. A decent one as well. But it's Sergio Asenjo. It's going to be Costa to whip it in. And unfortunately, that is a really bad shot. Play between Busquets there and Perez. Perez now to Busquets. Busquets is going to cut that to Halilovic. Alan Halilovic puts it on his right. He's just going to go for it. Why not? Halilovic off the crossbar. No real options. Decided to take the shot. He's been okay this game. And he wants to prove himself, obviously, with a starting midfield role now at Barcelona. He's really got to start proving himself. Denis Suarez could maybe be breathing down his neck. We've got Rafinha. We've got Sergi Sampa. We've got Sergi Roberto. So... Halilovic is to prove himself, and it looks like he really wants to get that goal. Oh, here we go. Villarreal have a chance here. It's all down to Samuel MTT, the new centre-back. Can he stop Bakambu? Oh, Bakambu cuts inside nicely. Can't stop him, but Javi Martinez can. That's the experience right there. Aguero's going to loft that one over. Good play from Aguero. That's what I like about Aguero. He can make things happen. He doesn't have to always be the striker. He can be the creator. What can Douglas Costa do here with the ball? He's found the gap into Aguero, who turns around. Bang that Aguero! And again, the keeper is coming to Villarreal's save. Good play there between Villarreal and Bacambo again. He's been an absolute threat on the left wing. He's going to whip that in. And a Jordi Alba, who clears it. And Moy Gomez, I was lost for words. It didn't let me select the player I wanted to. And Moy Gomez has ruined a really decent chance there. First change of the game here for Luis Enrique. He's going to bring in Denis Suarez as a left central midfielder for Alan Halilovic. He's had a good performance, Halilovic, but we need some fresh blood in the midfield. And Denis Suarez is going to be hungry. He's going to really want to have a good performance because these players are all competing for spots. Nothing is confirmed at the moment as to who's going to be starting. So everybody has to impress. Moy Gomez now cutting in on his left. He finds Soldado and oh my goodness, Bravo, just throwing, just launching himself at the ball and keeps us in the game. Villarreal had a very good chance here, but the counter-attack is on. It's Denis Suarez who's going to cut in. Who's he got in the middle? Who's got to go running in there? It's Rakitic who bangs it. And the keepers, man, they have been the man of the matches. The goalkeepers are, are making this nil-nil. They're keeping this nil-nil. Van Rakitic, he's launching that one in. Busquets was there. Dennis Suarez goes for the volley. <laughs> Imagine. Second substitution of the day, and Luis Enrique has decided to bring on Teo for Riyad Mahrez. Mahrez has had a very good performance, but we need some pace on the wing. And Christian Teo is going to be the man to come on and hopefully make an impact. 
Oh, Teo, nice work. Little drag back there. He's got boost. Gets in the middle. Oh, Teo. Yes, Teo. Lays that off to Aguero. Oh, it's found his one in the back of the net. And of all shots to have gone in, that probably has to be the worst. Good play from Christian Teo with the attacking presence, pressure. Wins the ball back, has the awareness to lay it off to Aguero first time. Doesn't try it himself, doesn't want to be the hero. Just wants to put in the work. And Aguero, of all the shots that Sergio Asenjo didn't save, that is the shot he didn't save. The P-roller of P-rollers. Hits the post and finds its way into the back of the net. Villarreal have been wasting time. They've been playing it in the corner. They've been playing... They've been parking the bus the last 10 minutes. Oh, Douglas Costa, that's a really good ball. Finds Christian Teo. Who's got a lot of room, doesn't have to do much, just has to play the ball. He's got... Oh my god, that's a ball. That's a ball from Christian Teo. That is an absolute ball. What an impact player. I had a feeling Christian Teo this season for us will be an impact player. I've given him the number nine to show that he is still an important player in this team. And that's why. That is why. He's an impact player. That's a ball. That is a peach of a ball. And we've made it two and Aguero has got himself a brace. There it is, full time, 2-0 here at the Camp Nou. A lot of happy FC Barcelona fans. It looked like we were going to a 0-0 draw for the entire game. It looked like the keepers were just too good to be beat. But I'm sure a lot of them are happy that we've earned three points here. It's, it's the only way we could have started this season and started it well was to got the win. A 0-0 draw just wouldn't have been good enough. It just wouldn't have shown our intentions enough. And Sergio Aguero has been the man to put him in. Two assists from Christian Teo. That's why Luis Enrique has put him on the bench. He's an impact player and you've got to give it up to Luis Enrique's tactical awareness there to bring on Christian Teo. As the stats show, 11 shots, 6 on target for us. 3 shots, 1 on target for Villarreal. Sergio Asenjo as well was really, really good. So the keepers played very well, but I feel like we did deserve the 3 points. And the stats, they don't lie. And Barcelona have picked up 3 points. I'm sure Luis Enrique is a very happy man. But that's it for today's episode, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. We've played our first game of the league and we've wrapped up a transfer window. As you can see, we sit in fourth position. A lot of teams winning their games, as you would expect, on the first day. Real Madrid won their first game 6-0. That's insane. That is absolutely crazy. Obviously, they're showing that they're going to be the favorites to win the league, pretty much, especially with our suspended players. They're going to be the favorites. Atletico Madrid ended up losing their game. Um, their first game, so that's pretty disappointing. Hopefully they're in there as well. Maybe Valencia will be in there. They usually do alright in career mode, so there'll be a few challenges for us to be getting at those top spots, but we really do feel like we can get those top spots. Of course, in the next episode, seeing as it's the start of September, there will be a press conference as per usual. You guys let me know what questions you would like to ask Luis Enrique in the comments section down below. But that's it for today's episode, guys. If you did enjoy it, make sure you leave a like on the video. I'll see you guys in the next one very soon. Keep it real.